Good morning. What's up? How's it going? Happy Monday. I'm trying to be in a good mood. <laughs> um, so I hope the audio sounds better. Um, Interstate Kings TV was talking all kinds of trash in my videos about how terrible the audio quality was on my driving videos. Um, made me feel real bad. I cried a little bit. Oh my goodness. There goes CDL university. That's the, that's the, um, CDL school that I went to. They just drove by in one of their trucks. I didn't know that they drove around this area. Um, but I, uh, yeah, Interstate Kings made me feel bad about the audio quality, so I did some digging, um, and I found that I thought it was using the the blue pair because I, I always almost always when I'm driving, I'm wearing my blue parrot headset and it's paired up with my phone. And I thought it was using the mic off the blue parrot headset, but apparently it wasn't. I did some testing and the whole time that I thought it was using the mic on the blue parrot, it had been using the mic on the phone. Um, so I spent two or three hours researching, trying to figure out a way to get it to force it to use the mic on the blue parrot. And I finally think I figured out a way to do it. So the, I hope the audio quality is better. I'm just, I'm, I'm kidding about interstate Kings. He, he was nice about it. I appreciate him. letting me know. Um, I did cry a little though, but I am disappointed in everybody else. who didn't say anything. What the hell I've been making videos. I, I, don't, I don't know how many videos I've made a recording while I'm driving down the road. And nobody's ever said anything about how bad the audio quality is. Um, and I don't really edit my videos, so I don't I don't watch my videos before I post them. So I didn't know how bad it was. But uh, yeah, anyway, hopefully that's fixed. So I am at Big Rig Products in uh, Oklahoma City. I live in Oklahoma City. Uh, I got here la yesterday afternoon about. 3 30 in the afternoon and uh, i didn't bother going home i just sat here um and you know watched tv and went to sleep and uh, waited for them to open up this morning and then uh, i got up and now i'm here um and now i'm waiting on them to to let me know which bay to pull into what sucks is i scheduled this appointment last week and I just checked in with the shop manager and he told me he had no idea I was showing up today. So he was not prepared for me. Um, all of their bays are full of trucks except one. And I don't see any truck that looks like they can uh, easily get it out of a bay. Um, like these trucks are up on blocks. They have the engines half disassembled. Like, it looks like he has, like, five trucks in there that he's rebuilding the engines on. Um, so, I think that that one bay on the other side is the only one he's going to be able to get me into. There is, like, a boat on a trailer. There's two boats, I think, in there on trailers that are in two of the bays. So, it's, yeah, like, I don't see an easy way to get a truck out of any of these bays. Uh, so, I don't know how long I'm going to have to sit and wait here for him to get me in, but, um, this sucks. I hope that the repair is on the APU is not a major repair and I'm a little pissed off about it. Uh, in case I didn't mention it in previous videos, I've, I've put a lot of money into getting this APU fixed and the APU has never really worked properly the entire time I've owned the truck. Um, the last time I put it into the shop here was about two weeks ago and 
supposedly we got everything fixed. It, it, I've had an overheating issue since I bought it. Uh, since I bought the truck, the APU's had an overheating issue, and I've gotten sick and tired of paying these shops six hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars to go in and just troubleshoot it for like three or four hours and replace a fifty dollar wire or a sensor, and it doesn't fix the problem. Um, so this time when I came into Big Rig Products, I said replace everything in the cooling system. I said replace the water pump, replace the fan belt, um, replace the uh, the valve, the shut, the cutoff valves. Um, what else to have them replace? Something else. And then he said, well, we should probably go ahead and replace the thermostat along with that. And I was like, well, what does the thermostat do? And he, he explained to me that it's what opens up and closes. Uh, um, it, it doesn't allow coolant to cycle until it reaches a certain temperature. Once it reaches 160 degrees, then it'll open the valves up and allow coolant to cycle through. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, hell yeah, let's replace that because that could definitely be part of the problem. Um, so I can't, I think there might have been one other part we replaced that I can't remember. But um, we, we basically replaced everything in the coolant system. And I still had overheating issues. And he told me that everything was good. It was just, air in the lines and he spent two or three hours getting air out of the lines and he told me that i just needed to run the truck to get the rest of the air out of the lines i was like all right cool so you know i drove the truck back over to my house start fired up the apu again he said running a mixture of running the apu and the main engine would get the air out of the lines so i just let the apu run at my house when i got back and um it overheated again and i had difficulty starting it so I brought it back over here and um, it fired up just fine when I got it back over here and we ran it for a couple hours and he was like, yeah, you just got to keep running it and get the air out of the lines. I was like, all right. So I took it back to my house, drove back to my house, turned it back on when I got back to my house, it overheated again. This time when it overheated though, I couldn't restart it. Um, and I just went back out over the road. I didn't have time to put it back in the shop. I went back out over the road. And um, while I was out over the road and I had some downtime at a truck stop, um, I tried starting it again and I could not get it to start. I, I, I probably cranked it at least 50 times, probably 80 or more times that I cranked it and I could not get it to start. And I read online, finally found where you can hold the start button down and get it to crank for more than you know just a couple of seconds it'll attempt to start you could hold it down for like 12 seconds and it'll it'll crank and i did that like a dozen times and finally it started and when it finally started that time it was at a really low idle like it was barely running and uh, i had the covers off when i started it so i went out there and i i tried giving it throttle and as soon as i hit the throttle on it it died so then you know i got it fired up again and i just let it run at that really 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 low idle for probably four or five hours and it finally hopped up to a normal idle and i was like okay it worked out whatever it was i thought i thought it might be a fuel issue i still don't know what the issue is i think it might maybe be a fuel restriction issue Wow, that guy almost rear-ended that other guy. Two trucks are pulling out of here, and one of them was going way too fucking fast. And almost rear-ended the truck in front of him. Did he not think he was going to come to a stop to make that turn? Like, what the hell? Um, but anyway... I tried now when it went to a normal idle, I tried turning on the air conditioner. Now when when the air conditioner turns on, it increases the uh the idle or it it gives it more throttle so that it can generate more electricity to power the air conditioning unit. As soon as I turned the air conditioner on, it tried to kick it on, it bogged down. Like it tried to give itself throttle and it bogged down and almost died 
and then it gave an error of under voltage or something like that. Um, so I'm hoping it's just a, like a fuel filter issue. I'm hoping that's all it is. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I'm just sitting around waiting on them to call me in to a bay. Not call me. They're going to walk out here and like wave me and tell me which bay to go in or something like that. But so we're getting it repaired today and we're going to get both the truck and the, uh, the APU serviced. They, uh, Dallas parking. This is a reminder that we are no longer using the Wilmer drop yard. Please only use the Waxahachie terminal for tractor trailer parking. Oh, shit. So we're not paying uh, Empire truck lines or whatever it is to use the uh, the Wilmer drop yard anymore. It's Hutchins, Wilmer and Hutchins. So um, it's Hutchins, Texas, Wilmer, Texas. Uh, there's, I think it's off of Fulgham Road or Fulmer Road. I forget which one it is. But on one side of the street, the south side of the streets where the drop yards at, the north side of the streets where the Loves is at. The north side of the street is Hutchins. The south side of the street is Wilmer. Like that street is the city line. But we're not using that drop yard anymore. That kind of sucks. Um, I know that's going to suck for some of the people that live in Dallas because they're going to have a much longer commute than what they have right now. Because wa wa I want to say Waxahachie is like 20 miles further south or something. So like Miguel, my trainer, he does weekly home time. He takes weekends off. And he drops the truck there at that Wilmer drop yard. And he lives in, uh, like, north central Dallas. Uh, I think he lives really close to downtown. Um, I know he lives north of Wilmer. And he doesn't live very far from the drop yard. Maybe, like, 15 miles or something. But, um, yeah, he's going to add, you know, I don't know how many miles to his commute and they still haven't given us the, the address for the Waxahachie terminal. Let me look it up on the ELD. Uh, let me tr try to figure out how to get there. Um, where was that? It? it was in, um, driver resources. Nope. Um, media library. Safety. Nope. Let's go back to media library. Um, let's try policies. Nope. Um, I found it in here. They moved it. It used to be under safety. Try Pro Tread. No. Definitely not it. News. Nope. Just gonna have to go through every damn one of these. No, that's damn it. 
some of these open up to other applications and it's a real pain in the ass. This is such a convoluted mess. It's got to be in media library. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I finally found it. It's in media library under safety. Um, they have two of them. There's a USA truck terminals and drop yard locations. Um, so terminals, they have Atlanta, Chicago, Laredo, Carlisle, Dayton, Tip City, West Memphis, no Waxahachie, Drop Yard, is Conley, Georgia, Baltimore, Maryland, Bensalem, Pennsylvania, Charlotte, North Carolina, Wilmer, Texas, Houston, Texas, Jacksonville, Florida, Kansas City, Missouri, Nashville, Tennessee, New Orleans, Louisiana, East St. Louis, Illinois, Morrow, Georgia, and Romulus, Michigan. Uh, and then they have Davis Transfer Company locations. I don't even know what that is. Davis Transfer. Um, Lakeland, Florida. Valdosta, Georgia. Carnesville, Georgia. So um, I guess if I ever need to know where the Waxahachie Terminal is at, I'll send them a message and ask them where in the hell What's the address of the Waxahachie Terminal? But I'm going to need to contact safety. Um, I'll probably call them after this video uh, because I still can't download my, uh, my logs. And... Uh, my driver manager supposedly submitted an IT ticket a couple weeks ago for it, like two weeks ago. But I'm going to give safety a call and ask them what the hell. And also, I tried to use the inspection report to email myself the logs, but it doesn't let you put in an email address. Um It uh, it just like I don't know. It just auto sends it to an email. Uh, so I guess I just sent my logs to the uh, FMCSA or DOT or somebody. Uh, but when I did it, it told me that I was in violation because my VIN number was not attached to the logs, my truck's VIN number. So I need to get in touch with safety and ask them about that. Um. If that's the issue, then it's been like this the whole time I've been driving. So I've, I've been in violation the whole time. Uh, because they don't have my truck listed properly. They don't have my VIN number listed on my truck. In the system. So that's, that's about it for me. Um, let me let's talk about real quick before I end the video, um, what happened with Chewy.com. So I had that load that was going to Dallas, Texas from uh, basically Cleveland, Ohio, Akron, Ohio, Cuyahoga Falls was a, the city I picked up out of, uh, Kong Distribution or something like that was where I picked up. And they, um, there were two other USA truck owner operators there picking up loads when I was there. We were representing 
We had the USA Truck Gang out there. Um, they're pretty easy to deal with there. They got me loaded. They're really nice. It was a light load. Both of the Chewy.com loads I pulled were pretty light. The first one was 25,000 pounds, and it was a full trailer load. Um, like, they didn't double stack pallets or anything like that. So it was uh, single stacked pallets. Um, it was a floor load. Um, I don't know how many pallets was in there. But it was all the way, you know, to the back door almost. But it was only 25,000 pounds. It was mixed product. It was all kinds of different stuff. I don't even remember what all was in there. Um, I was expecting it to just be a truckload of dog food, but it wasn't. The... Uh, second load was also mixed product but it was only 11 pallets 6,000 pounds and I got there to Dallas and they they told me that they were actually closed okay they're coming out the door right now I think they might be telling me um, no they, they kicked open the door and then they closed it back I don't think they actually came out of the door so they're I think they're about to come out here. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, no, they're just... They're going over and doing something else. But, um... They told me that they were the receiving was actually closed. So I uh, I was like, damn. I was like, I told I was told that I could drop this off as soon as I could get here. And they said, Yeah, our receiving doesn't open until five AM. I was like, Well shit. I said, Well, I'm just dropping a trailer. They said, Oh, if you're just dropping a trailer you can do that right now. I'm like, what about an empty? And he's like, you can have any empty that's out there. I'm like, well, I saw a nice land star out there. <laughs> but, nah, he uh, told me I could have any empty out there. So uh, I said, well, can you sign my bills? He's like, yep. He signed my bills, gave me a copy, told me to drop the empty wherever I wanted, or drop the loaded wherever I wanted, and pick any empty up I wanted. I was like, well, that works out. So that's what I did. And I had an hour left on my drive time, 48 minutes, somewhere in that area. And it was just barely enough time for me to make it to a TA in Denton, Texas. I wanted to get to the north side of Dallas um, in the middle of the night rather than having to drive through there in the day. So I used that extra time on my clock to get to the TA in Denton. And I got to the TA in Denton. I got real lucky. There was somebody pulling out of a spot just as I was pulling in. I was like, sweet. And uh, camped out there for the night. Got up the next day. And uh, spent like an hour and a half trying to fix the, uh, the Bluetooth microphone issue. And I also grabbed something to eat. Used the bathroom. And I fueled up there. Uh, it was like a dollar eighty-three a gallon with my discount, so it was pretty good price. I went ahead and topped off there so that I wouldn't have to drive to the other side of Oklahoma City to get fuel when I leave. And uh, yeah, and then I just I drove up here. Sunday. I left around noon, got here about 3.30 or so, and just camped out here until this morning. I have a load. It's Monday morning. It's 8.40 a.m. right now. Um, I have a load that's picking up in Wagner, Oklahoma. Let me actually... check and see it's unarco unarco industries wednesday from noon to noon or 12 to 12 what does that mean so i have a noon appointment on wednesday i 
I'm going to have to uh, I hope that I saved that load in my spreadsheet because they uh, you know what I think I actually saved it in one note I might have to double check the pickup time because whenever they assign the load to you, it's ever all almost all the information is wrong. I, I've I've complained about that from day one working here, and they've never done anything about it. I don't know why, but all I get is excuses every time I I complain about it. They just they have a bunch of excuses as to why it's like that. Apparently, the uh, the system is too complicated. There's too many points of failure, and they can't fix it. So they just give excuses as to why that the way it is. And they told me, you know, take pictures and stuff of the loads whenever you select them. You know, they, they said, find some way to work around our, our fucked up system. We're not going to fix the system. You need to figure out a way to work around it. So I'm... Uh, Yeah, so it looks like it might maybe be a noon pickup. Usually, whenever they give you a, a, an appointment of like middle of the day like that, like noon, or, you know, it, it just looks like a, a dummy uh, appointment time. Like maybe this is a first come, first serve kind of place. They don't have any notes. So it says it's nine pieces. There's only nine items they're putting in the trailer. And it's fixtures. Going to a Walmart. And it's going directly to a Walmart store. A regular Walmart super center in Richmond, Kentucky. I have never delivered to a Walmart store. Um, once during training, I delivered to a Sam's Club store not like a distribution center once but normally i just go to distribution centers and on the walmart store delivery i have a delivery window of like a day all day long from like midnight to midnight and i'm curious if i can actually deliver at any time I'm probably going to get there and there's going to be some damn drama because they only receive during certain hours or some crap like that. Uh, I hope that they actually do receive 24 hours a day. We'll, we're we're going to find out. I, I don't know. I've never delivered directly to a, a, a Walmart store. But after I get... Uh, Everything situated here after they do the, the service on the APU and the truck and fix whatever's wrong with the APU. Um, then I'm going to bobtail back over to the house and hang out there until I need to leave. And then when I need to leave, I'll come back over here to this place, pick up my trailer because I'm going to leave my trailer here and I will leave from here to go to um, pick up my load in Wagner because I think I'm going to take I-40 to Wagner. There's a couple of different routes you can take and uh, I think I'm going to take the cheap route because if I uh, I can either go uh, I-40 to Highway 69 and take that up to Wagner or I can uh, take I-44 basically to Tulsa and then take the 351 Muskogee Turnpike down to Wagner. Two toll roads. So I think I'm going to take the the, the non-toll road route there because I am... I don't think I'm going to have to take toll roads. Yeah, I, I am going to have to take toll roads out. Like, I can take Highway 69 all the way up to 44, but I'm going to hit 44 while it's still a toll road, and I'm going to have to take that. Um, I'm going to have to take that out. But that's that's about all that's going on with me. 
and again, I appreciate Interstate Kings for pointing out the, the poor audio quality. And I hope this uh, sounds a lot better. I installed a, an application called BT Mono uh, that forces the Bluetooth as the, uh, the recording for everything. So hopefully, hopefully that works. And uh, I'm going to, you know, go home and take a shower and hang out for a day and then hit the road again. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time at home right now. I didn't actually want to come home right now at all. I wanted to stay out on the road. Um, the only reason I'm at home right now is because the APU doesn't work. And I'm, I'm like, I really hate putting so much wear and tear on the truck engine of having it run 24 hours a day. And uh, also the fuel cost. Like I burn a lot of fuel. My miles per gallon are probably really low because of how much fuel I'm burning by running the engine all the time. So I, I'm already invested in getting this APU working. I've already spent a lot of money on it. So we're going to keep dumping money in it until we get it fixed. And now I'm like regretting not going to my house last night to get a shower because I'm kind of stank. I haven't had a shower in a couple of days. Um, the last shower I had was, shit, when was it? It was, oh my goodness. Trying to remember if it was before or after I picked up the load on Friday. Um, where did I stay the night at? Okay, I stayed the night at that. Uh, okay, so it was after I picked up the load. I stayed at that travel plaza before I picked up the load. I went down there. I picked up that load. And it was in Nashville that I took a shower. So Nashville, I got to Nashville. When did I get to Nashville? It was late Friday night. Oh, it was like 7.30 p.m. Friday nights when I got to Nashville. So I took a shower about 8 p.m. Friday night. That was, I haven't had a shower since then. It's Monday morning at 8 a.m. So it's been like two days since I've had a shower. So I'm, I'm pretty ripe. I'm feeling sticky and icky. Right around the two-day mark is when I, I start feeling like I need to take a shower. I, I start to, if I go more than about two days without a shower, then I just feel nasty and I don't like being around people. I'm embarrassed to get near anybody because I start smelling really bad. Um, So, yeah, kind of feeling bad for not going and grabbing a shower last night because I'm probably going to be in close quarters with the mechanics while I'm uh, getting all of you know this worked on because I'm going to be talking to them about what's going on and I'm probably going to need to be starting the APU. Uh, it, and Unless they kick me out of my truck, I'm just going to stay in my truck during this whole time uh, because I really don't want them. They're They're really nasty, like. Not nasty like me, like haven't taken a shower in a week nasty. They're really nasty as in really greasy. They have tons of grease and dirt on them. And I don't want them crawling into my truck to start the APU. So last time, um, I, I sat in the truck starting the APU for them. And this time, I plan on doing that again. I'm, I'm going to, you know, sit in the truck and pop the hood and... Uh, start the APU and do all that kinds of stuff. Oh, another weird thing is my check engine light went out. So I have a check engine light that's been on since I bought the truck. Well, it wasn't on when I first bought the truck. It came on later in the day when I was driving. Like the, uh, It was the same day or the next day that I bought the truck. The light came on. It's been on ever since then. 
and it is uh, an after treatment sensor. It has something to do with the DEF system. And uh, it's a NOx sensor, an NOx sensor. And the dealership told me that the sensor isn't reading. It's reading, it's like it's not there. The sensor is not re getting any information. It's not reading at all. And they wanted to charge me something like $1,500 to replace that sensor. Are you kidding me? Um, I don't even know. That's, that's just absurd. Uh, so it's on my to-do list of items to fix, but the check engine light went out. I don't have that light going on anymore. But it's done that a couple of times. It'll probably come back on. Uh, we'll see. But maybe it'll stay out. Maybe it, it just, you know, you have to slap the side of it, get it working type thing. I think that's about it for this video. I talked, not, you know, I keep saying that's the end of the video. And every time I, I, I keep thinking that's the end of the video, I think it's about something to talk about. I talked with Percy yesterday or the day before. He called me last night while I was in bed and I didn't answer the phone. He called me late at night. Well, it probably wasn't late for him because he's in Vegas. But he called me at like 11 p.m. or something. Um... And I was already like half asleep, so I just turned the phone off. But uh, I talked with him the other day, and he's still waiting around uh, to get his stuff cleared up. Uh, I don't want to, you know, put his personal business out there. Um, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but he has some stuff he needs to get situated. He hasn't driven for almost three years. He basically retired from trucking. He never planned on going back into trucking. And uh, he's he's wanting to do it now. Uh, like, he doesn't miss the life. He still hates the life. But he misses the money. And the re the retired life uh, doesn't pay very well. So he, he wants to come back out here and uh, make some money. And so he's having to get, uh, you know, some things taken care of before he can get back out on the road. But uh, once he gets those taken care of, he's looking for a company to start with. Um, you know, if anybody out there has any ideas or suggestions of companies, he hasn't really done any research. And I'm not familiar with companies that hire out of Vegas. I, I told him that if, uh, if he was in a USA truck hiring area, I would try to talk him into starting out with USA truck, but here is what his problem is, is that he, it's been almost three. He said, it, he said it has not been three years yet. He said it's been about two and a half years since the last time he drove a truck. And that's his problem is that he doesn't have any recent driving experience and he does not want to go back through training again. He doesn't want to team drive with anyone. So he's, like, he was initially wanting to get on with, like, Prime. Like, I don't know why, but everybody wants to fucking start with Prime. Um, but, and then I, I was like, yeah, Prime Prime's not a very good option. He's like, well, what about Wilson? I was like, Wilson is Prime, damn it. <laughs> it's their sister company. Uh, but apparently the reason he is wanting to drive for Prime and Wilson is, Wilson is both of them had been uh, sending him recruitment stuff. He was on their mailing list or something. I think that's the reason a lot of people want to drive for Prime is because Prime has a hell of a marketing program. Uh, like everybody knows about Prime. They have a lot of their drivers. They, they have amazing referral bonuses that they actually pay out. Whereas a lot of these companies, uh, you have to harass the shit out of them to get the referral bonuses. And you may never see a penny of it. Even then, uh, you may have to take them to court to get the referral bonuses. They, they may tell you that, you know, that person never got hired on or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, prime, 
was his number one choice. And uh, I was like, well, you're probably going to have to go through like three months of team driving with Prime. They'll put you through the full training program if you haven't driven in that long. Um, but he's looking for a company that will basically just do a refresher with him where they'll just like take him out for a day or maybe a week. Um, he's trying to find the, the, the easiest way to get back into driving without having to like team drive. He doesn't want to team drive. He also wants to make money and his goal is to become an owner operator. Now he, he and I started out in the same, well, we met at CDL school. We got our CDLs together the first time in like 2000. 2004 and um you know we've been in touch ever since then but uh when we came into the industry there was a lot of negativity on becoming an owner operator you just it was something nobody did that was just that was the what everybody said it's just you don't do it it is stupid to be an owner operator um, the fuel's too expensive. The the rates are too low. It's just not worth it. Anybody who becomes an owner operator is a moron. That was the like idea at the time. That's that's what both of us were told by everyone. And one of our CDL instructors was an owner operator that owned his own tractor and trailer, and um, he had his. It was a cab over. Like you don't see those but he had a cab over and he was an owner operator and he owned uh, his own tractor and trailer. And he had them parked at the parking lot where we did the, uh, it was a, an abandoned mall parking lot where we did our skill maneuvers uh, for CDL school. And he had his equipment parked there and he even told us, yeah, don't do it. It just doesn't pay well enough. And the costs are too high. The pay is too low. Like everyone told us, don't become an owner operator. And um, they, they said, you're stupid if you do it. So both of us never really even considered becoming owner operators during our careers because of all the negativity we heard about it. Um, I never really did a lot of research. I looked at, I started with Swift Transportation. So I looked at their lease program and it was terrible. I was like, how do you even make money on this? Because they only paid like 60 cents um, a mile. They paid flat rate mileage on their lease program and it was like 60 cents a mile, maybe 65 cents a mile. It was somewhere in that area. I was like, how do you make money on this? This is absurd. This is terrible. Fuel is gonna cost you like 30 cents a mile. And then you have all kinds of costs on top of that. So like a lease operator at Swift made less money than, an, you know, a company driver in the best of conditions. Like if nothing went wrong, <laughs> I was like, why would anybody do this? And I was like, oh, this is why everybody says it's ridiculous and stupid. And don't become an owner operator. So I never really looked beyond that. And Percy was in the same boat as me. He never considered becoming an owner operator. Well, I've been talking to him since uh, since I've been, you know, getting back into the industry. And my whole goal this time is to become an owner operator because I did a lot of research on it. And uh, I've been telling him, you know, what I found out and what I've been experiencing and what I've been doing. And he is uh, he is now wanting to become an owner operator. Um he wants to come back out here and, and give it a try as an owner op uh, because I think the most money he ever made the entire time he was a company driver for almost 15 years. Um, I think he said the most he made in a year was $70,000. 15 years out here. The most he ever made in a year was like $70,000. That That's pathetic. But he was a company driver the whole time. So I hope that he gets his shit in order and, and gets out here. Um, it'd be nice to drive with him again. And uh, 
you know, my goal is to get on with Landstar and hopefully uh, I think his, he, you know, he wants to kind of do the same thing now where he starts out at and how his journey leads him to Landstar is going to be different than me, but I think we're both going to end up at Landstar and uh, hopefully he and I can drive around the country together. Um, that would be really awesome if we could find some places that had the exact same loads to pull and, uh, you know, like hit up a broker, talking to him about a load, get a good, get a load and be like, Hey, do you have another one of these loads? Cause I have another driver that I drive with be like, Oh yeah, I've got like three of these. I'd be like, can we do the, the same, the same load, same rate, same everything with, uh, with my buddy. Uh, he's also a Landstar driver and they'd be like, yep, let's do it. And I can give him like, uh, I can have, you know, Percy give him a call or I can have him call Percy or whatever. And, you know, we get set up on the same loads and run together. I know we probably won't be able to do that very often, but, uh, with both of us grab, you know, doing our own loads off the load board, you know, we could schedule meetups or, you know, we can occasionally get the exact same load where we could run together. And he and I pretty much run the same. We're both hard runners. Uh, we're both the kind of people where we start our day, we drive our full 11, and then we stop for the day. Uh, you know, we're not the kind of people that stops and takes breaks and, you know, eats and, you know, do, does all that shit all throughout the day. If it wasn't for the 30-minute break, I wouldn't stop for my 11 at all. Um, so, you know, it's... Uh, he and I running together would be pretty awesome. So I'm looking forward to him getting back out here. And, uh, yeah, just be nice to have a buddy out here on the road to run with. But I think that's about it for this video. Talked about Percy, talked about my, what I did, what I'm going to do, what I'm doing. And, uh, again, thank you, Interstate Kings. Um, I can't remember if it was Kings or King, Interstate King TV, Interstate Kings. I think it's Kings TV. Um, thanks for, uh, you know, pointing out the audio issue and I hope the audio is a lot better on this one. And, uh, unfortunately there wasn't a whole lot to look at. I probably should have just pointed the camera at me since it was just, you know, staring at. Uh, that building the whole time. Let me pop this out. Urgh. I'll give you a, a quick look around. Uh, windows dirty. That's it. That's where I'm at. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.